Stencils are some of the most versatile tools you could possibly have in your toolbox. Today, I'm gonna focus pretty much on five stencil techniques, but I picked up another five to show you. And then my good friend, Jerry, she has another five to show you. We have lots of cool techniques coming your way. We're gonna start with some basics, double stenciling techniques. And first off, we're gonna secure our paper to our stencil. You can take this another step further and secure your stencil to your work surface as well. I'm using just some very simple purple tape here. You can see I've got the same amount of negative space as I do positive space. This is the Split Chevron Stencil by Katherine Pooler. I actually love using this stencil. You can do a lot with this little tiny, simple, simple pattern. Gonna make sure that that's really attached well. <laughs> I cannot stress that enough. You don't want this moving on you. Pink Champagne inks part of the release, uh, you know, as of today, just a few weeks ago. Gonna use one of the blending brushes. This is one of the Yosang brushes that I have off Amazon. And gonna do some basic shading. Now you can use whatever you have. You can use a sponge, makeup sponges are great. You can use mini blending tools, scrapbook.com dome tools are awesome. Whatever you have. Just gonna kind of skip around here just so that you don't have to watch it. If you wanna see real time, be sure that you check out my patron page and gonna clean off everything in between. Make sure you're cleaning off your stencil as well as your work surface, especially when you're switching colors, which we're gonna do next. So this is the shift technique. This is a very, very basic technique. You can create new patterns, but because we have the same amount of negative space as positive space, we're just gonna shift our pattern upward like so. So this technique, we're going to actually bring in a new color. I'm gonna use a color wheel to kind of get a feel for where these colors lie. These are complementary colors, so they're across from the color wheel. So I'm taking a darker version of the sea foam, and that would be the sage. And just gonna go ahead and do the same thing that we did before. Now you could leave it as this, but we're gonna of course take it to a whole nother level in a second. But look how cool that is. Those colors really pop and they work really well together. Now, the double stencil technique. I love this technique. And this is stenciling through a stencil with another stencil. So I'm taking Sage, which is actually a darker version of the sea foam. And you need a darker version. You could do it with the same color and it would not have the same amount of impact, but this was a small space and I'm taking an even tighter stencil, which is this little mesh pattern. And you can see here all the projects, all the supplies are listed below. Look at that cool pattern it creates. Of course, I jumped ahead. And like I said, if you want real, real time tutorials, check out the Patreon page. Look at how cool that is. Stencil through a stencil with a stencil. Pretty cool, right? Don't go anywhere. I have a total of 10 techniques I'm gonna show you and you have to make sure to check out Jerry's channel as well. Be sure to leave me a comment with your favorite stenciling technique. Like this video and subscribe if you're new here. Let's dive right back in. This next group of techniques are all about adding texture and interest to your projects. I have a smaller piece of paper and I'm just going to use part of the stencil. I'm using both of these stencils. They come as just one from Create a Smile. Love these. It's called Winter Day. Using created a very cool background with some ink blending techniques. I go much more in depth on that over in Patreon with the real time tutorial. And here I'm adding Queen for a Day, which is an unexpected color uh, for a blue sky, but it really just kicks up that intensity. I wanted to highlight how I went to a smaller brush there. Crucial to have those smaller brushes if you own the blender brushes. I have a couple links uh, that I have below on some tutorials I did with including some with the smaller brushes. They are invaluable. So using that partial stencil, getting that secured nice and tight there and some whip spackle by Faber-Castell. Whip spackle is awesome for textured stenciling. It's lightweight, it's perfect for cards. You can use any medium you want. I cannot stress that enough, any medium. But I have it listed below, spreading that with a palette knife, which is my favorite tool to use when I'm using a heavy you know, medium like this, he meaning like a, a heavy texture like this. Uh, I, of course, jumped ahead here and just kind of straightening that out, making sure that it's nice and flat. I wanted that for the trees. But here's another technique, chunky texture stenciling. I come back in and make it textured, like raised a little more than the trees so that there's some variance. Don't always think that you need to scrape your stencil and make it totally flat. By having putting down a little tiny bit more of 
you know, texture and lift, it gives us so much more interest. Now here's a bonus little tip for you. Add a little extra fine glitter onto your wet medium. And that way when you heat set it, it will kind of, you know, come together. You can also take your medium before putting it through your stencil onto your glass medium mat or other surface and mix it up with the glitter to make it a chunky glittered medium. Just don't put that back into your regular tub. Use that new Wagner heat tool, which I love. It's brand new. It, it hasn't been out very long. It has dual speeds and it's almost half the cost, $25. I love that. Uh, and that is, Wagner makes the best heat tool there is out there. Now, I really greatly sped this up because you saw me do it with the base. I just wanted to show you that little tip. I spritz my stencil if I can't get to my sink fast enough. That way it's keeping that medium a little bit more wet because you do need to clean your tools and your stencils immediately with these types of mediums. It dries super, super quick. There was a whole lot more to this tutorial and a lot of tips and things that went wrong and how I fixed them. And that's all over in the Patreon community. But look at that texture. Is that not awesome there at the bottom? And it's so sparkly. It's perfect for snowfall. I love how this card turned out. Oh, but wait, I left the best for last. This last section is loaded with techniques. We need to secure our project down. So notice that I'm securing not just the paper, but then the stencil as well. And I'm really got this secure. I wanna make sure this baby's not going anywhere because we're using these domed applicators. These are the new ones by scrapbook.com and they fit on the mini tool, either theirs or the Ranger or the Tonic Studios or any of those tools. And we're gonna start off with a little bit of picked raspberry distressing by Ranger. And I'm being very deliberate in where I'm putting it. And I very quickly realized, you know what? This is an accident waiting to happen. I only want that lower flower. So I really need to mask off this section. And you know, I'm an accident prone person in real life and on paper. I don't know about you. <laughs> You'll have to tell me in the comments, do you do that also? Normally I would actually put a piece of paper up there to even make sure that I don't get anything. And I think I do the further along into this I go. But here we go multicolored stenciling. Don't just always think, you know, just one color, bring in others. You know, we're gonna create a tonal look here on this flower. It doesn't need to be just one color, you know, and that's part of the fun of stencils. It's really the sky is the limit and we're not just gonna stop it too. We're gonna bring in some squeezed lemonade in the center and kind of radiate that out just a little tiny bit. And that's not even it. But look at how cool this flower is, right? I mean, this is gorgeous. This is a stencil by Stamplerations. We're gonna take one of those, like we did earlier, you know, lightly spritzed paper towel, and just kind of rub off all the color off that stencil, because here, this is important. This, you need to have that off. We're taking this awesome ink pad. This is the scrapbook.com embossing ink pad. Look at that design. The lid snaps into the base so that it extends it. There's finger grips on the side. It's a very well thought out ink pad. And we're gonna do a little bit of resist stenciling. By putting some embossing ink through that stencil, we're gonna give it a coat with of some clear embossing powder. And that's really gonna help us to do some further techniques to create something very impactful and very cool. Now, this right by itself would be amazing. Another bonus technique plays off this last one by trapping the color using clear embossing powder, resulting in the trapped stencil technique. Here I've gone ahead and covered that with some Nouveau clear embossing powder, taking this brand new heat tool by Wagner. Love this baby. So easy to hold. And you can see I've got a very nice glossy flower. Now, I do want you to realize that I pressed a little too hard with my ink pad. And so you'll start to see a little bit of a white outline on the left side of the flower. I just pressed too hard several times going through my stencil. Just try to avoid that. It's really not the end of the world because it just kind of creates a shadow effect. Did some very, very light ink blending there. Notice I left it white kind of up top. That's because we're doing some fade out background stenciling. I flipped the project completely around. I'm gonna go ahead and add, secure it there project to the stencil. We're gonna take some tumble glasses, the same, this is the lightest shade, 
very lightly and in a controlled manner coming from the corner, being very careful not to really go to the flower, just kind of almost barely touching it. You really want to be intentional when you're doing the fade out technique because the beauty in it is when it loses it, you know, kind of like a uh, infinity pool. It just kind of goes off into the distance. And that's what you want to remember when you're doing the fade out technique. To complement this amazing flower, I don't want that this pattern of the linked up stencil by Catherine Pooler to overtake the project. It's supposed to support the project. Stenciling can be impactful and it can also play a supporting role. But here, this is taking stenciling to a whole nother level. This is the faux batik technique. When you use that embossing pad to secure color and then you drop more color around it, which in essence is also called the Joseph's Coat technique, this technique, the faux batik technique, which can really only be achieved well, I guess it's not necessarily just a stenciling technique. It's kind of like a bonus regular technique. You can then iron off the embossing powder because you could do this with stamping, but I love to do it with stencils. See what happens when you use like real cheap paper, copy paper or, you know, a phone book, you can iron off the actual embossing powder with a dry iron. And that's the key, no steam. I have this particular technique in real time over on Patreon with another project. It's such a fun technique. Now we're going to take that same little <laughs> ink pad by scrapbook.com and this is a little finishing technique. I know this isn't a stenciling technique, but sometimes when you create everything on one layer, you need to add just a little something to put it onto a very simple white background. And that is what I do there with just a with very simple bossing on the corners. It's not all the way around, just kind of controlled spot embossing. Was 10 not enough? Do you want more? <laughs> okay, Jerry has a video, that's the bottom one. Definitely click that, check out the several stencil techniques that she has for you. And that top video will teach you even more cool techniques to do with stencils. Leave me a comment, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, check out the patron page, and, and you know what? I'll catch you right over in that other video.